Hey, what's up everybody? This is Quet, and today I'm going to be doing a video on functions in JavaScript. Essentially, um, the way I like to think of functions, I think of them as a mini program inside of your application or website that carries out a set of instructions that you give it. I would say that functions are used in every programming language, um, and you may or may not um, know that they exist. Um, but what they what they do, they, they have a set of instructions to do something, and um, when it's time for their name to be called, they carry out the instructions that they're given. Um, functions can be written a lot of different ways. There's different kind of functions. There's event listeners. There's you know basic functions. Um, but today we're we're, we're going to focus more on some basic kind of functions. So. To create a function, this is going to be similar to the video that I did um, on declaring variables in JavaScript. You'll start out by using a keyword. So with, func with um, variables, we're using const to let. With functions, um, we're going to use the keyword function. So this is the way that I was taught to create functions when I first started learning JavaScript. You'll use the keyword function. You'll give it a name. We're going to use test. And then you're going to use parentheses. Um, we're going to come back to these parentheses in just a little bit, but I'm just kind of showing the basic structure so far. After that, you're going to have these curly braces. Everything inside of the curly braces are going to be the instructions that you're giving this function to do when it's ran. Um, after that, I like to kind of keep it on a separate line. Um, and normally, your, your functions are going to be. Uh, multi uh, multi lines a, a couple of lines um so here we're going to do something really basic we're going to do console log um this is working so as i said i like to keep this on separate lines especially when i'm writing um a function in this way but this this could all be in one line and still run um so after you've done that um if you haven't used console log before essentially what that does is it logs out a, it it sends a message it prints out or logs a message to your browser console window um which i have open here on um in chrome if you don't know how to get to it these three dots here go to more tools and developer tools or you can also use this shortcut right here um, so this was the first way I was taught to create a function. There's one other really basic way I would say, and that's to name your function. I'll put test2 here. Set it equal to function. And then create it this way. And here if we console log, this is working, this should work. So here we have two different functions. We have test and we have test2. When we run them, they should both print out this is working. And actually, we're going to change this. This is test1. And this is test2. I think that'll be a little more cleaner. So now we have this. We have these two functions created. And now how do we make it work, right? So the first thing I want to show you is well first yeah first i'm gonna refresh this page here so i have an html document and i've linked this uh script um this javascript file to it so if i come over here to my uh browser now i can write the word test one this is referencing this is called referencing the function and what this does, it just shows me what the function does, what it says, the exact code, right? So this doesn't actually run the function. This this isn't actually logging it out to the console. In order to call a function, you want to write the name of the function. And then those parentheses that we that we created before, um, you're just going to use these parentheses, and that's going to call the function. And here we see it prints out this message. This is test1. All right, and we can do the same with test two, just to show that it works. And there we go. So we're running those functions now. So this is really basic, but it can get a little bit more powerful. We'll do a little bit more further along in the video.
And the last way that I want to show you how to create a function is a little bit more advanced, but it's it's not that confusing, and it's actually my favorite way to write functions. There will be some people that say they don't like using these kind of functions. You'll see a lot of people say that they love and only use these kind of functions. Um, and as you get further into your um, coding journey, if you pick up uh, like React, for example, it um, I find arrow functions to be very useful when coding in React, just because of my coding style. Um, but I, I guess if you, you know stick along with me, we'll talk about that in a future video. Um, so yeah, the, the other way, um, if you watch my video on declaring variables, constant let, um, you'll see this is a little, might be a little more familiar. So first we're gonna use the keyword const. You're gonna give your variable a name. So we're gonna say test three. And then you're gonna set it, you're gonna use this equal sign. And here you're gonna put your parentheses. Then you're going to put an arrow which is how it gets its name as an arrow function. And then the curly um, braces where you put in your um, the instructions. So here we're gonna count to log, this is test three. So if I refresh this, I put it, I'm gonna reference test three, we can see it here. Um, so it does look a little bit um, different than the other Two did I believe? Yeah, so this this one says f for function here, it's saying it's function and what it does, and this is just showing um the parentheses. It kind of looks like an anonymous function, um, but there we go. We we still have like the reference, and then if we have test three here with the parentheses, we see it runs. It says this is test three. Another thing that I do want to show with arrow functions that um maybe a little confusing if it does confuse you don't worry about it just you know remember what I said if arrow functions in general confuse you that's fine too um, I would say these two are a little bit easier um, to write and remember when you're beginning to code um, when I first learned about arrow functions I was really confused about them and was like you know what I'm not using them I just had to get comfortable with it and you know write them I would often refactor I would write one of my functions uh, one of these two ways, and then I would go back later and try to rewrite it as arrow function. So with arrow functions, if we actually were to delete the curly braces and put all of this on one page, this works. Um, and let's actually test this. Test three. We see that it runs. The reason for this is because this arrow here is called an explicit return. So if you have a one-liner, um, you only need one line of code here, you can use this arrow as an explicit return. Um, and it's gonna carry out the instructions right here. You don't need the curly braces. If your um, function is gonna be more than one line of code, then you do need to use the braces as I showed earlier. And um, yeah, I, I really like writing code like this, um, especially if I have a function that's only going to be one line. I can definitely just, you know, do it this way. Um, but yeah, and we'll we'll get into returns um, actually coming up next. So I'm going to revert this to how it was and actually uh, I'll keep an example of what it looks like on one line. Cool. So now I want to show you how to make these functions a little bit more useful and, and do a little bit more. So we're going to create another function and we're going to call this function. We're going to have this function add up a set of numbers for us. Um, so I'm going to call this function add numbers. Okay, so we have our basic structure here. Um, I gave it a name. I set it, you know, set it equal to a function, and I have my curly braces waiting for instructions. So inside of these curly braces, I'm actually going to add some code. So I'm going to write a and b. These are called parameters. These are essentially variables, um, and these are variables that they're not declared yet, but they'll be used inside of the code. They'll be created inside of the code. So parameters are 
um, you can think of it as something that the function is going to get that it's going to be um, put into the function and then it's going to use it. So to make that m maybe make a little more sense, um, I'm going to just kind of complete this function here. So I'm going to write this keyword return. What this does is when you're writing a function and you have multiple lines, when it reaches, um, when you're ready to have it execute something um, inside of your code, you're going to use this, this keyword return. What this does is the rest of the function stops running and it does exactly what happens on this line. Um, so anything after return is not going to run. And that might sound confusing, like, well, why would there ever be code after return function? Um, if we use any conditional statements, if else statements, sometimes code is, there's going to be a return statement inside of your if statement. However, if the if statement isn't used, then you're going to have your else statement, which is going to be under that return. And that's also likely to have a return statement. Um, and so, as you can see, a return statement may never be reached. It may be skipped over, is what I'm trying to get at. So we have this return here, and we're going to return A plus B. And if you've ever taken any algebra classes, this may be a little more familiar for you. So in algebra, let's say you had, um, like, x plus 2 equals 5. When you go here, you're going to subtract 2 from both sides. You're going to get 3. x equals 3. So x wasn't declared or didn't have a value. Um, well, we didn't know x's value until we, you know, did the problem. We don't know the value of a and b here. We just see that we're going to add a with b. So if we go to write add numbers here and call it, we're going to have to put an extra step into this now. We can't just run add numbers without putting these parameters here. And so a and b are variables that we don't know the value of until we give it a value. So if I say that a and b, if I say that a is, uh, I don't know, let's say 5. a is 5 and b is 3. We save that. Now, this is going to make a little more sense. So what we're doing here is we're giving a the value of 5, b the value of 3. So with parameters, um, another thing to keep in mind is to always separate them if there's more than one with a comma. And here, if we break this down, we have this function. It takes in two arguments or parameters, a and b. And then it's going to um, return a plus b. So if you look here, we have that numbers function. It takes 5 and 3. It's going to return 5 plus 3. So if I refresh here, I run at numbers. Uh, actually, sorry, I give this. Uh, it's not going to work because of this. So let's do this and refresh. Okay, cool. So I'm actually going to comment this out and I'm going to do it here. So if we do add numbers, 5 and 3 here, we see that it returns 8. It is exactly what we wanted to do. So our set of instructions is to take A and B and add them together. Here we're saying A is 5, B is 3, we're getting 8. So, okay. So the next thing that I want to show you is that you can actually have, so I've shown you two parameters. Um, you can have one parameter. You can even have three parameters. You, I don't know if there's actually a limit to how many parameters you can have when coding. So, um, you know, if we just take this same function that we have here and we add C, um, if we refresh here, we have our 5 and 3. We see that we have an error here saying not a number because we don't have C. So we're going to add C here. We're going to add 2. We see that we have 10. So it works. As long as you fulfill all of the parameters that it's looking for and it, you know, it, it gets some type of value for all the parameters, it's going to run.
Um, so that's 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 how functions work. You you give it a name, you give it parameters if it needs any, you call it, it runs. Um, a few other things I just kind of want to show you really quickly. Um, we could do something like um, create an array. So we'll call our array R. And we'll say, um, we'll keep it simple. We'll have A, B, and C. And we could um, introduce other concepts here. Um, so if you aren't familiar with for loops or conditionals, this may be a little confusing. I can do a video in the future going over for loops and conditional statements. Um, however, if you are already familiar um, and have a little background of how uh, conditionals and uh, for loops work, uh, this, this should probably um, be helpful. Um, uh, uh, that's that's something you already know, and, and this is just kind of showing you how to plug it into functions. So I'm going to create a function called um, loop, right? So loop function. We're going to write a for loop here. We're going to set i equal to zero as long as i is less. Less than r dot length. We're going to continue going, and then we're going to console log this. Essentially, what this is doing is um, I'm creating a function called loop. We're going to loop through everything inside of this array, um, and it's going to console log everything in the array one at a time. So if I refresh here, I call loop. Loop is not defined. There we go. So here we are. We have exactly what we're looking for. We have A, B, and C. They're console logged one at a time. Um, we have our for loop going through each item in the array and putting it out. And you can also put conditional statements in it inside of um, the statement. So let's say we have a uh, Let's say we want to get into a club. We're going to create a variable called age. We're going to set it equal to 18. We're going to say um, club equals function. And we're going to give it a parameter here. We're going to give it a parameter of age. Which, which matches um, this uh, this variable here. Like, uh, these ages aren't the exact same thing. So when you put um, a parameter, it can be literally any name here um, or like whatever you want. <laughs> um, the, the parameter variable can be whatever you want. Um, it's going to be, the value of it is going to change maybe every time you run the code. It's just kind of like, Depends. So um, I'll 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 kind of make that more clear um, as I continue coding. So we have club. It's a function. It's going to take age as a parameter. Um, we're going to say if age is greater than or equal to eighteen. We're going to console log welcome. Have it. Uh, I'm just gonna say, come in and have a good time. Else, we're gonna log 
Sorry, you're not old enough to get in. Okay, we're gonna save this, and we're gonna run club. So, um, what we have here is we have a variable called age. We have our value set to 18. We have um, a function here called club. It's gonna take a parameter here. This parameter is called age. It can literally be anything. I'm actually gonna change it to x here, just to show that. Um, and we're gonna say, if x is uh, greater than or equal to 18, you're allowed to come. We're going to say come in and have a good time. If not, so you can't get in. So we're going to run club here, and we're going to put age in as the parameter. So you might look at this and be like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Before, you had age set as a parameter, and now it's x. We don't have, you know, now you're throwing your age in. So this is what I was saying a little bit earlier about you can put anything as the name of the parameter. The name of the parameter doesn't matter so much as long as you're consistent throughout your um, function with that variable. Um, when you're calling the variable, the value um, that it's actually going to run is going to be some um, other variable that you feed it. So here I'm telling it that x is equal to age. So now this doesn't really have a value before. It's just x. We're saying, hey, we're going to... We're going to take a parameter, we're going to call it x, we're going to give x a value later, um, and if that value that we give x is greater than or equal to 18, then run this code, else don't. So now we're saying x, yeah, equal to age, which is equal to 18. So we should be allowed to get in. So if I refresh here, it says come in and have a good time. So I think that's all I wanted to show you guys today about functions. Um, just the basic structure of how to write them. I've given you three different ways to ways to write functions. I've shown you how you can um, call them, how you can reference them, how parameters work, and how they can get a little bit more complex by adding things in such as loops and conditional statements. So this is part of a larger kind of series that I'm doing this week. Um, if you saw my last video, my last video on variables and you see this um, this is kind of covering a little bit of that, but adding to it with functions. Um, at the end of the week, I should have a video on a mini project that I think will be um, fun to make. And um, everything that I'm showing you leading up to that is all going to come and blend together. So, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Um, it really goes a long way, um, and I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, you can also um, follow me on uh, Twitter on Inst and Instagram. I'm getting pretty active on Twitter. If you have any questions or anything that you would like to see, you can definitely engage with me there, or you can leave a comment under the video. All right, thanks for watching.